If you're solid on a solid procedure to grade an ideal unconstrained rural home, you'll be able to use it on less ideal projects. What I mean by ideal and unconstrained is that this lot isn't uncomfortably close to lot lines or steep areas of the existing terrain or other buildings or walls, etc. And what I mean by a solid procedure is it's not just used by one person or one company and it's not just somebody's new idea. It works in the real world for cases that aren't ideal and it helps minimize your uncertainty and rework when you have to go into non-ideal situations. And here are the features of this procedure. It's going to use a single closed grading area using infills in the interior and a projection grading on the outside. This will let us proceed without worrying about a boundary and without ever adding any feature lines to our finished grade surface. Next, this feature is going to start by creating ideal feature lines, starting with AutoCAD lines and polylines and keeping those lines and polylines until, until the very last possible moment, turning them into feature lines, since we're so good at working with lines and polylines. The next feature of this procedure is this re realization. At every physical break line that's a cliff or a drop-off, there can be only one feature line. And we're going to let that feature line be for the side that's the steepest which is normally the dirt side. And on the flatter side, which is normally the concrete side, we're going to put the feature line away from the physical line. The question is how far away, and it's pretty obvious that it should be somewhere between a wall thickness and zero, with hopefully some bit away from zero so that we don't have to be zooming in infinitesimally small all the time. You could use a wall thickness or you could use a half a foot. The latest that we have been using is two tenths of a foot. That's a little bit small but it's enough that a two percent slab is only going to have four hundredths of a foot of error. Next, in this procedure, we're going to grade the patio, the porch, the sidewalk, and the concrete driveway, but we're not going to treat the garages as separate from the house since the house foundation and stem wall and main roof system include the garages but we could just as easily apply what we're doing to the patio, porch, and concrete, site concrete, to the garages if we wanted to. Let's start by making some offsets of the house on layer zero, and then we'll go ahead and do the ideal grading of the house itself. I'll offset this five feet. This is the house itself that we need to drain. Drainage rules tell us we have to drain to drain it. And our rules say we're gonna we need to be at ten feet away we gotta be a foot below the floor and at five feet away on the fill side we gotta be seventy five hundredths below and then four to one down. So I've done these offsets that represent five feet and ten feet and I'm gonna put them on layer zero for the moment. And then I'll isolate the site concrete and the house, and then I'll copy them to the current layer. And I did that using the copy to layer command. Now I'll go around every concrete slab, and I'm going to offset inward in toward the concrete slab. 
The question is how far to offset. My only recommendation is that you use one true offset for the project. Since we're always offsetting on the flatter side where things may be as flat as 2% or dead level and aren't likely to be more than 5%, it's probably okay to offset at least 2 tenths of a foot because 5% times 2 tenths of a foot is only a hundredth of a foot. So we could offset 2 tenths or a half of a foot, which is less than a wall thickness usually. Uh, I would, would recommend going less than a wall thickness. So I used to do half a foot. Somebody recently talked me into 2 tenths. I wouldn't suggest less than 2 tenths. If you want to absolutely insist on 1 tenth, you can do it. So I'm going to do 2 tenths. Offset 2 tenths. This way, this way, this way, and this way. I just offset it for the patio. Now I'll offset for the floor of the house. Just because I want to be mindless and follow my rules and it won't hurt anything. I There, I've done for the patio and the floor of the house. I'll do for the front porch. And the floor of the house. I'm going to have some cleanup to do. Now I'll do for the concrete driveway. One inside for the concrete driveway. Okay, and I'll assume I can fill it that other one. I'll do this one that way. Okay, now I've got some cleanup work to do. I'm going to do that offline and show you the finished product because we, knowing where you're headed is where it's all about on cleanup. One thing I will show is that I'm going to isolate my feature line layer, which is currently just polylines, and I'm going to explode. I'm going to go ahead and explode it all before I start, and then I'm going to use a lot of fillet radius zero to clean things up, and I'll see you on the other side here. Okay, I have most of the cleanup done, but I've left one step undone to point it out, and that is that this middle line was the actual physical wall of the house, and I need to erase it because I've gone inside for the house slab, and I've gone inside relative to the inside to the, to the patio slab. So I need to erase those. I'll see you on the other side. Now that these lines have been erased, I can turn on all the layers and we can see that the actual outside wall of the house has an offset inward for the patio slab and inward for the house floor slab, inward for the front porch, and the actual front sidewalk has an inward for the sidewalk grade. And the concrete driveway has an inward offset for the concrete grade on it. So every concrete slab has an offset inward. The next things we need to do are create our swales and hinge lines and then our single outside closed feature line that we'll do our projection grading from. And that means it's time to start guessing how we're going to grade this house. If we were just thinking manually, what would we do? So we can see it's got a 1533 contour, 1532, 1531. So it's on a ridge. So it's probably going to want to be in cut up here. It's probably going to want to be in fill down here. So we're, our rules say that on the fill side, we're just five feet away. On the cut side, we're 10 feet away. So if we're on the fill side here, we probably don't need this 10 foot line in this area. If we're in cut here, we probably don't need the five foot line in this area. 
and I'll leave a little bit extra on both of them since they're just on layer zero at the moment just in case I get it wrong maybe we are in fill here maybe we're in cut so I'll leave them both maybe we're in fill here maybe we're in cut I'll leave them both next my rules say that on the cut side I should be two feet away from concrete so I'll offset my sidewalk and my concrete driveway and why not my gravel driveway too it's crucial at this point that I really think about how this probably will be graded because I a little bit of thought here will save me a lot of time later I imagine we'll have some cut up here in the front yard that'll hit a swale and go one way or the other around the house I imagine that there might be some cut here that'll run along the driveway and eventually go out this way I imagine that it'll cross the sidewalk either over or under and come around the house this way and I imagine that these swales will go to nothing up here where I assume we're matching a street so I start working toward my closed outside polyline feature line okay I've made it approximate and cartoonishly pretty way for these swales to die out up at the street next let's see if we can trim up this swale in the front yard I've clearly made a little bit of progress and I no longer need th these lines because they're in the middle of all my fill work so I can erase them I can uh, take this line it's in the middle of some fill work for the house or cut work or something I can bring that out to there which is a 10 foot offset of the house although I could have filleted it with a 10 foot radius we'll leave it as is and then I'm just gonna smooth out some of these so that they'll grade nicer I think I'll actually fill it that with a 10 foot radius because that will be a swale going around the house and that'll work kind of nice and maybe I will just put this maybe I'll actually draw a line to tangent to this to this uh, swale and I can uh, I'll fill it again since that's the easiest way to to do that all right I may want to just have a swale uh, the stretches there we'll think about it. and at this location it might be nice to have a little more rock walkway so I'll just stretch that out to there I'm getting close to having a single closed outside line to do my projection grading I just need to figure out where I'm going to change from a 10 foot offset to a 5 set foot offset let me turn on all the layers and there's my 5 foot offset I don't need the well I'm gonna let's explode this clean this up I'm gonna okay I have my layers cleaned up a little more now let's start to actually guess what the floor of this house will be if the floor is eight inches well let's guess what the pad of this house will be uh, uh, 1533 will be too high 1532 will be too low so the pad of this house might be somewhere around 1532 and a half or a little higher than that so if that's true the floor is going to be 1530 three and a little bit so if I'm a foot below the floor that's 1532 and a little bit so this 10 foot line is probably going to end about right here and about right here so 
let's just guess for now. Uh, and we can stretch it along these layer zero lines later. Like, I'll, like I can grip edit this and just guess. 1532 and a little bit. I just use my Nero snap and put that there. And then this, uh, I'm just going to assume that that's going to go at the end point of that. And then I'll stretch this one back. And then let's think about it a little bit. Let's just uh, pause, think about this a little bit. And I'll take this five footer and send him to the end point. All right. So this swale will come to this point and then just kind of fall off. This swale will come to this point and then just kind of fall off. So if we're think if I'm thinking straight, that should go well. Next, I'm going to try making a closed polyline around the edge of this thing. I'll pause while I do that. All right, this is closed now and I believe that this is what I'll do my projection grading from. All that's left now is for me to start assigning elevations to things and then, well, turn them into feature lines and then assign elevations. Now the question is what, what should I do most efficiently now? I think before I turn everything to feature lines I should go audit one last time because it's not going to be pretty to work with feature lines compared to lines and polylines. As I audited it, it was obvious to me that this garage door and this garage door are going to be level and I need to drain out with a valley. So I'm going to add a valley in here. Then I think I'll also need a valley across here. So I'll add those two. Okay, I've added this swale along with a break in the line at the, uh, a break in the dirt line near the uh, concrete swale and I've added a swale feature line here with a little connector since that's a swale. Now I could have some surprises but it looks to me like that might work to grade this house and you want to stare at this and really think is this really going to work? The water, oh I need a swale across this sidewalk. That all right, I've added the swale across the sidewalk. And we just keep staring because it's a lot cheaper to stare now than to fix later. All right, I'm ready to take my chances and I'm going to turn all these into feature lines. They're on the feature line layer, no name, no style, and I'm going to assign their elevations to zero. Now I'll go around using quick edit and start designing this house. That's going to go negative 0.33, four inches down. And then we'll go down, we'll go out at like one to two percent slope, etc. And then this will be flat. This will be the same elevation as the other, negative a half. What do you know? This will be negative 0.33. So now I've got my patio graded. A 4 inches below the floor and then a 1% out. I can do the same at my front porch. Put it 4 inches below the floor. 0% slope. 1% slope. And then 0% here, 0% here, and this is both negative 0.43 on all four corners here. Now we want this, what does our rule say? 0.25 lower, so 43 and 25 is 68 minus 0.68. And this is 0%. This is minus 0 0.68. 0%. So now I've got my front porch graded and some adjacent grading. And I'm going to go around the house 
like that. I'm going to set all these adjacent dirts according to my rules, minus 0.5. And I'm going to set all these 10 foot away as well. They need to slope. But so what's the very highest one? That would be this one. This one needs to be a foot below the floor. So I'm going to set, well, no, I suppose this highest one here needs to be a foot below the floor. And we'll drain that way and this way. Let's turn everything on. We're, we're being real engineers now here. Yeah, we could drain either way. It's, you know, a debatable. I, I'll put this one, I'm going to put this one a foot below the floor. So let's make this one minus one and then we'll just start sloping um, some some percent I'm using a, a half a percent minus 0.5 and I'll continue and, and meet you on the other side all right progress report I decided to make these two points my high point and grade away from the the sidewalk the front sidewalk in both directions so you can see i have five hundredths point five percent uh in in all directions looks like i made a mistake there minus point five minus point five minus 0.5 and when I get to the end I hope that I'm somewhere around well we don't know yet all right I'll keep grading and let you know I'll use straight grade to grade from here to here at minus 0.5%. All right, I think I've got my outside feature line graded, but I need to grade my inside. I need to grade the floor and the, all the patio and sidewalks. So I'll meet you on the other side of that. This needs to be minus 0.67. That's what our rules, I think, say. So I'll just make this 0%. 0 minus 0 0.67. This is up at the garage door also. So I'll make it minus 0.67. All right. Uh, let's make this. It's a plane, so it needs to be 1 or 1.5%. One I'll make it minus 1.5. Since it's out in the open, going to get a lot of rain, I'll make this minus 1.5. I'll make this 0. And that's a negative 107. I suppose this needs to be quarter foot below that, minus 132. So now this... This needs to be a quarter foot below this. 0.92 minus 0.92. And this needs to be, well, it's where our rules say it should be a half a foot below the floor. So minus 0.5. And then I'll make all the slopes from there zero. I'll meet you after that. At this point, everything seems to be good. I've put the outside of the house a half foot below the floor. I put both of these uh, slabs four inches below the door and then sloping outward. I've put the adjacent grade a quarter foot below the concrete. And I just need to work on tying to existing grades. And let's try to raise this whole thing up to what we think it should be. And it should be, we hope, 1532.7. And select all these feature lines. 
Now I'm going to isolate the feature line layer just to be superstitious. Fifteen thirty-two point seven. Okay, and uh, check some of these. Fifteen thirty-two seven, fifteen thirty-two two, fifteen thirty-one seven. Yes. Okay. So I can set these based on the surface. And that based on the surface, and this based on the surface, this based on the surface, and uh, maybe this based on the surface, or maybe go down a quarter of a foot, so 33, 25. Okay, um, and I guess I'll make this 2,500 higher. No, maybe I'll make it equal. It's hard to say. Maybe I, I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter much, I suppose. We can work on those details later. Um, I think it might be time to try making a surface. So... Turn on all the layers, home, grading, creation tools, and I say we're going to do grading group FG, we're going to do to surface EG, we're going to grade to surface, let's try it. This template should be well set up. Grading side, entire length, yes, cut. Four to one, that's what our rules say. Fill, four to one. Okay, it looks like we might have a little too much cut for what I'm trying to do in this front yard at a four to one. So I might have to tweak that. I might have to play with that somehow. Um, but I'm going to pretend it's okay for the moment and just start doing grading infill. And I just start clicking in all these spots where I want to do grading infill. And uh, fill in all my, fill in my entire design. And I'll be done. Uh, in that patio. All right. Uh, I can check if I'm done by doing an object viewer. Uh, I don't know if I did automatic surface creation. Okay, I turned on automatic surface creation. It looks like I just have a mistake here on in my front yard. 3318. 32.93. That might make a difference. Okay. We still got a little problem. I might want to tweak something. Sometimes uh, you, you have to actually believe that there's a physical problem, a physical difficulty, and you can tweak it. And it looks like I fat fingered uh, that number. And it looks a lot better now. I'm only missing my cut daylight line, so I might tweak a little bit more. I'm missing that cut daylight line in a lot of places. It looks like I might be in cut here too, so I might need to check my dirt quantities, raise and lower it a little bit. But first, let's use the object viewer to, to see if we've got some holes in this surface. I'm going to click on a contour. Click on Object Viewer, and uh, I'm going to change it to Conceptual because that actually starts actually looks best. Uh, okay, there's a little hole here and a little hole there. 
That's not bad. So I got to do some infill over here and some infill up here. So I'll uh, GI grading infill, thoic, and thoic, 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 thoic. All right. So I did those grading infills. Now if I do the object viewer, there shouldn't be any holes in my surface. Yeah, that's a nice complete surface. I'll check my dirt quantities in the tool space under sites, FG grading groups, properties, and my cut is 321 and hardly any fill. That's amazing. So I must have 32 point. Yeah, my front yard and everything. Everything's in cut way more than I think. So I'm going to try to do this without um, erasing any of my projection or infill grading just by isolating the feature lines and raising and lowering them uh, 0.7 feet. Now that's a little bit slow uh, because it has to grade, but not too slow. All right, and I'll turn everything back on. Doesn't look bad, and my properties, uh, tool space, Grading group properties now says uh, I still, oh, I have cut and fill purportedly uh, in a balance, but again, I'm going to be bringing in 150 yards of material, uh, so I need to have. Uh, I, I need I, I need to have supposedly export because uh, I mean import because I am going I need 150 yards of import because I'm going to be importing 150 yards of material. Of course, I'm going to lose about a tenth or or 15 hundredths across the area of my site, and uh, those usually about cancel out from what uh, we've. Uh, seen uh, but well, I'm getting close I'll do some spreadsheet calcs on that while I and come back okay it looks like I'm going to lose about 35 to 50 yards uh, to compaction and I'll gain about 150 yards uh, in in materials import so overall I'm going to gain about a hundred yards, uh, so I need to to have a a, a fill of about a hundred yards to really be at a true balance. So um, I I figured that I gain 350 yards for every foot. So to gain a hundred yards, I need to probably go up about uh, two ten, uh, three tenths, maybe three tenths. Or two tenths. So let me let me do this one more time. I'll isolate these feature lines. I'll uh, raise and lower them about two tenths. That's going to put, see, purportedly my floor needs a lot of fill, but again, it's going to have ABC and concrete and my. Uh, my driveway is also going to have ABC and concrete to the tune of about 150 yards. I'm going to lose uh, about, it looks like, about 30 to 50 yards, so in, in compaction loss. Let's look at the numbers. Okay got 89 yards of import. Now the way we usually say this is that there's a fill um, reduction 
due to the materials import. So that this fill now is zero. There's a fill increase due to the compaction loss, which brings the fill up to about 50, and the cut's 50. So yeah, we're at about at a balance. We're about at a balance now. All right, turn on all the layers and see how our design looks now. We got fill on the downstream side of the house. And I'll look at this a little bit and let you know what I think after I adjust these. Go back to quick edit, go back to the surface. And same one on this one. All right, let's just look around. Now we have below and behold our daylight lines. That's very nice. Uh, we have a swale here. Interesting. Or, or, or a hill. No, yeah, it's a swale. And uh, this is... What's going on here? 3310. 3285 and then we drop way off that is very nice that's what we expected we go five feet away then drop off uh, that's almost in cut but not quite very nice very nice this um, you know we're supposed to slope at five percent for ten feet so now, whether this is compliant or not, that, that's the decision I made was to use that 5-footer. We could have just used the 10-footer all the way around. It would have simplified our lives. Um, here, I'm 3177, which is below grade. So let me see if I can adjust that and come back. I'm going to delete the projection grading because it's a lot faster and it's real easy to get rid of, get it back. When I'm done, uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to say, let's see, my elevations here is 3206. That's in cut. That's in cut. Uh, 3177. Oh, I see we're still in cut. So I need to... I'm in a hole. I need to go. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. I need to go out to somewhere. I'm going to think about that. What I decided to do is add a PI and stretch it out to this little swale and see if I can get my cut to go to, to look right out there. I'm in fill and I'm still in fill and this will be the this will be the flow line of my swale. If I do quick edit, this is at the surface. This is now 157, so I probably didn't have to go that far. So I can just uh, stretch her back a little. Um, maybe to here. Put it at the surface again and check that, that slope. It's still 124. Well, I'd rather have it not, not fall off so suddenly right there, but that, you know, that might be the same as the existing terrain. And I also don't want any more disturbance than I need to. So let's try it again. Quick edit, quick edit this point surface so now it's 50 3178 3177 okay i've i've succeeded in in not in ruining it so i'll just go a little farther and put it down to the surface Quick edit this down to the surface, and now my slope is 1% down. I'll, I'll accept that. That'll be my flow line. Um, 
that's good for that side. And then this other side, 3285, so that's big time fill. 3217, that's pretty good. That's pretty good the way it is. Um, in fact, I could just set that to the surface. And it's 3212. It's just a little lower, which is perfectly compliant with all my rules. And so I can go ahead and create the grading, the projection grading again. Side, entire, slope, four, slope, four. All right, I think I have a design. Uh, the only thing for presentation I would need to do is I can either, I think I'm going to draw a swale on a warp or swale layer or valley layer here wherever I have a valley and just trace it right over the feature line. That's kind of clunky, but I think that's what I'll do. I could do one other thing here, just to be a cool boy. I could um, replace... I, when I exploded this thing, it turned my curve into a, into a bunch of segments. So I, I the, go to the context menu, click that, and... I, fit curve. So if I put a fit curve there, that becomes a little more cool. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. I've graded this site completely. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.